Time for a glimpse into the 2019 Tennessee Volunteer football team as it feels like a football Saturday here in Knoxville, but it's spring football. Coach Jeremy Pruitt through the vol walk. The stars will be out. Jared Garantano coming off a solid campaign a year ago. Daryl Taylor was a monster at times on the defense side of the ball. It was a good season, but something they will build upon from a year ago. Wherever you listen, ladies and gentlemen, at Leland Stadium in Knoxville, it's football time in Tennessee. Callaway goes up to make the catch. He gets swallowed up. Daryl Taylor. Can anybody catch him? No, they won't. Touchdown, Tennessee. Wide open out of the backfield. What a win for Jeremy Pruitt and the Tennessee Volunteers. Coach Pruitt already in fall form, getting after some players before kickoff of the spring game. ESPN's Football Power Index has Tennessee as the 15th best team in the country heading into 2019, coming off a 5-7 and seven campaign. Dave Neal alongside former Alabama All-American Barrett Jones. So glad you could join us. And Barrett, here it is, year two for Jeremy Pruitt. How important is this spring game? Well, most great coaches make their biggest leap from year one to year two. Obviously, Tennessee had some bright spots last year, big wins over Auburn and Kentucky. Can they make that next jump? Can they become more consistent? Can they get tougher as a football team? I think it all starts at the quarterback position. And, of course, they have the returning Jared Garantano to lead the way. Talk to me about what he needs to do to take that next step. Yeah, he needs to continue to be more consistent. Obviously, a new officer coordinator, Jim Chaney, trying to help him take that next step. Did a good job of taking care of the football. Only three turnovers, but lacks explosive plays. Only 12 touchdowns. This offense in general wasn't very good as a whole statistically. They're going to have to make big leaps this year offensively if they want to win and accomplish what they want to do. Well, he saw some of the form that he can put on the field in that win over Auburn with 328 yards. We'll see how that plays out today. Let's go down to the field. Join Molly McGrath, who has the head coach alongside. Thank you so much, Dave. Coach, what do you need to see from Jarrett Garantano and your offense today? Uh, just be consistent. Make sure we're in the right plays uh, in the run game. Make sure we take care of the football. Don't take sacks. Get the ball out of his hands. And if I think we do that, we'll create some explosive plays. You're a defensive guy. What excites you most about this year's defense? Well, I just want to see if the guys can ex execute, play together, and see how they tackle today. All right. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Coach Pruitt. Looks like he's ready to go. Got the football in the hand. Maybe he'll play a little quarterback today. But there is Jarrett Garantano, who will take the snaps for the white team today. And interesting that uh, Coach Pruitt puts out the first team offense against the first team defense, and then the twos will go against each other, respectively. Paxton Brooks will kick it off, and we are underway in the 2019 Tennessee spring football game. Bryce Thompson to bring it out. They will blow him dead. They'll spot that ball probably back around the 30-yard line, maybe start the 25. And here is Jared Garantano. And some of the areas, I guess, that, you know, as you look forward, these are some of the things that he's going to try to work on. Yeah, I mean, the big storyline last year was how tough this kid was because of how much he got hit. And talking to Jim Chaney, one of the areas he really wants to see him improve is that second area, quicker decision-making. Can he get the ball out of his hands? And can he take good care of the football while he's in the pocket? And only had three picks, but he did have four fumbles last year moving around the pockets. Got to take care of the football for them to be successful. You'll see some players in black jerseys. That means no contact for them. Of course, the quarterbacks will wear the black jerseys. First carry for Ty Chandler, the junior out of Nashville, who had an explosive season. Brought down by who else but Emmett Good, the biggest returning, perhaps most talented returning defensive lineman on that group. Yeah, Ty Chandler is certainly one of their playmakers on offense. This guy jumps off the tape at times. He has elite speed, looks like a sub 4-4 guy. They're going to try to find creative ways to get the ball in his hands. Second down and eight for Tennessee. Garantano drops it off underneath out to about the 32-yard line goes Josh Palmer. He'll pick up four. That's kind of the Jim Chaney signature offense right there, is getting the ball out of your hands quickly, the quick passing game. Something Tennessee didn't do much of last year and didn't do it well. Jim Chaney is famous uh, for kind of being able to get quarterbacks in rhythm early with that quick passing game. Jared Garantano said he feels as comfortable as he's ever felt in a Tennessee system, which is something considering he's had four coordinators in four years. Jim Chaney will call plays for both teams this uh, Saturday afternoon, or I guess early evening now. Busy day for the coach. 
Garantano goes underneath. That'll be shy of the first down. Pass caught by Jawan Jennings, one of the eight returning receivers that had a catch a year ago. That's probably the deepest unit on their team this year is that wide receiver unit. A lot of experience coming back there and a good mixture of some some young guys into the fire as well. Joe Doyle will kick it away. Last year, Joe punted 65 times for a 41.1 yard average, had a long of 71 against the Georgia Bulldogs, the freshman All-American. Coach was telling us he's been kicking them at practice so well over at the practice facility, but when they've been coming in here to practice the kicking game, it hadn't been uh, as solid. So now the Orange team will have a chance at the football. J.T. Shroud, 6'3", 215 pounds, the redshirt freshman out of Newhall, California. Coaches say he's got an outstanding arm. Not as mobile as perhaps the true freshman, Brian Maurer. Going up top on the first play and has a man pass is caught. Tyler Bird making the catch. A gain of 43 yards. Yeah, showing off that arm right here at the very first play of the game. Protection kind of breaks down, but stands in there, delivers a strike right outside the numbers. A beautiful ball right there by JT Shroud. Shroud with a little pump fake, and he'll try to dance out of traffic, and they'll blow the whistle and stop him just inside the 35 yard line. That'll be a loss of five. And that's something the coaches talked a lot about as they really wanted to find a way to get this guy comfortable in the pocket. As you see JT Shrout's numbers this senior year, 3,000, over 3,000 yards passing in one season. That's, I don't care what level you're doing, that's, that's, that's spinning the rock right there. So they'll blow that down as a gain of three from Jeremy Banks. Banks is a guy that's had an interesting few months. You know, last year he started off as one of their running backs. They're, they're a big back at 6'1", 218, but has had some fumble issues. So they put him back at linebacker toward the end of the season then brought him back. Now as he is, looks like he's going to be in the mix at running back just because they don't have that big, powerful back. And he certainly provides that for Jim Chaney's offense. That's a, a big spring game for him. He's got to take care of the football. He's got to look comfortable because Jim Chaney wants a one two punch. Obviously, it has Ty Chandler there, wants to find a power back. Shroud passes caught, but back at the original line of scrimmage. That one goes to Banks. He'll pick up a couple of yards there. So it'll be fourth down. Let's see what the Orange team wants to do, and they'll bring out the kicking unit. So Paxton Brooks will jog onto the field and attempt a 46-yard field goal. Paxton did the kickoffs a year ago. And the kick is on the way, and it is no good. So both teams have had an opportunity and nothing on the board. Getting started with the 2019 Tennessee Spring Football game. Well, one thing we learned about Jared Garantano last year and even the year before was this young man can take a hit, <laughs> perhaps too many. Per definitely too many. That was certainly an area of improvement this offseason was that offensive line. Got sacked 23 times last year, but got hit almost too many times to count. I mean, he was beat up in a lot of games, got knocked, knocked out of a few games. They certainly do not want him to take those kind of hits this season. Look, this is certainly the uh, the best quarterback they have on the football team this year. And uh, I think he's got the potential to be one of the best signal callers in the conference next season if they can keep him upright. And I think Jim Chaney's quick passing game will be a big part of that. I, I think that's going to really suit him well and going to keep him from taking a bunch of licks this year. Well, he has made a point of it that says, you know, he doesn't mind being called tough, but now he wants to be known <laughs> as a quarterback. That's right. Not just the tough guy on the team. And he has even improved uh, the way he approaches his offseason workouts, trying to add some weight, changed his diet. That handoff goes to Tim Jordan, his first carry. That'll pick up five. 
But Garantano knows that this is his football team, and part of being the leader of this team, he needs to be better in the huddle in terms of being more of a leader. He talked to us about that, but I think it all starts with you got to make some plays. And he has perhaps the best group around him that he's had and perhaps will have here at Tennessee offensively with two really good running backs. He's got a talented group of receivers coming back, led by Callaway, Palmer, Johnson, Murphy, Jennings. All those guys can make some plays for you. Well, there's no doubt. I think one thing people really underestimate how difficult it is is having four off the coordinators in four years. I mean, there's no one that that directly affects more than the quarterback position. I mean, learning four new systems, that's, uh, that's, that's a lot of work. And so uh, pretty impressive uh, that he's been able to do that. But I, I think this is his favorite system thus far. If you ask him, he's very comfortable, and I expect a big year out of him. Jim Chaney certainly was an excellent hire for Absolutely. this Tennessee team. And he told us yesterday, you know, there's a lot that goes into that decision. But one thing that is a common denominator at most of his stops is he's been in situations like this where a team's trying to dig themselves out of what has been a, a difficult period um, and kind of reinvent themselves. Yeah, he's a builder. I think he loves the idea of building this program. Obviously, a guy who's been here before. Uh, certainly one of the, the most established coordinators in the country. If you look around all the different stops he's made, success has followed everywhere he's gone. So there, there was no one who was more excited than Jared Garitano. I actually asked him that. I said, you know, did you know who Jim Chaney was? And he said, absolutely. I remember my freshman year watching Jacob Easton throw touchdown yeah. passes to wide open receivers and thinking, man, I would love to get me some of that, some uh, touchdown passes to wide open guys. So he was he was pumped when Jim Chaney was hired. I think he was very excited about what he could bring. Knew he has a ton of experience, obviously, on a big national stage. Uh, and that relationship is, is really going well so far among those two guys. Garantano and his team at second and 10 right now. And Garantano certainly is one of those guys that has confidence as he'll be whistled for a sack. For more on Jarrett, let's go down to Molly. Well, Dave, you mentioned Garantano's main focus in the offseason was to put on, on some weight, become more durable, sustain some of those hits, become stronger and faster. He gained over 20 pounds, and this is how he did it. Take a look at the breakfast that he ate almost every morning. Now, this is a Barrett Jones kind of meal. <laughs> he has an omelet, and it looks like a double bacon cheeseburger right there. I'm told he ate upwards of four to 6,000 calories a day to put on that extra weight. That is a breakfast of champions right there, Molly. I, I love the idea of you know, eating great food for breakfast. I don't know why we have to limit ourselves to eggs. So that is, uh, that's my kind of breakfast right there. That's the kind of breakfast I used to eat when I was trying to put on weight. And, it's a lot of fun. You know, Jared's got to eat a bunch of calories this offseason. You know, in all seriousness, he needs it. I mean, he, you can see he's put also put in some hard time in the weight room. It has not been 20 pounds of fat. He's put on a bunch of muscle, and uh, the guy looks really, really good and ready to be an elite SEC quarterback. Well, he misfires there with Marquez Callaway. Those two hooked up 37 times last year. Garantano came out of high school. For those who don't know his story, out of New Jersey, is a four-star recruit, was an Under Armour All-American. So certainly the, the credentials to be an SEC quarterback. Yeah, I, don't know. I know spring games are always frustrating for quarterbacks, right? I mean, you spend all, all spring and all offseason putting in you know, complicated packages and putting in things that are going to try to fool the defense. And then what most coaches do is they come out here and they run their their most basic vanilla route packages, right? Because they don't want to put anything on film for next season, particularly when you're talking about having a new offensive coordinator in Jim Chaney. They're going to want to hide all their good stuff. So uh, as a quarterback, it's always frustrating just because you're, you're being kind of handcuffed with only your vanilla stuff. False start on the offense. Like Riley Locklear, a junior out of Huntington, West Virginia, penalized for that. Will Ignat was trying to put some pressure on the offense up the middle and forces the offside. So they backed him up. Now they move him forward. Not sure if Coach Bruin just wanted to see a first and five or not. Spring game for the officials, too. Handoff coming near side. Big collision out of bounds as 
Jeremy Bakes will pick up 10 yards. Hit by Sean Schamberger. And I like Jeremy Banks's game. You mentioned first few games last year had some bright spots. But man, he's he's really well built and a perfect compliment to Ty Chandler if he can take care of the football. Because I guarantee I know Coach Pruitt well. He will never play a guy who consistently fumbles. That's nothing bothers him more than turning the football over. So if Jeremy Banks can find a way to take care of the football, I just think he sets up really well as a compliment back. And he's gonna get a lot of carries today. Shroud's throw is off the hands of Jacob Warren. That'll be incomplete, so it'll be second down and 10. Boy, if you're a play caller, today's your day, right? If you're Jim Chaney, if you like calling the plays, two hours of just ringing them up. That's right, all play calling. So he's, uh, you know, it's got to be a little confusing. We were talking to him about it yesterday. He was like, okay, every time I, I get the play call for a certain offense, I got to remember, am I winning? Am I losing? Who's my quarterback? What package do I like for that guy? Jim Chaney can handle it. He's been doing it for a long time. JT Shroud steps up in the pocket. That one's incomplete. A quick slant over the middle looking for Tyler Bird. Tyler's a guy that certainly has big play potential. He had 15 receptions as a freshman, but only four catches over the last three years. Running out of time, now a senior out of Naples, Florida. Yeah, that's, that's somebody they really need to develop on this offense. They have a lot of possession-style receivers. They need a game-breaker on the edge, so they've been looking to a lot of different guys to see who can that speed guy be on the outside to try to take the top off of the defense off of maybe a play action set. Oh, their best, most explosive guy is their running back, Ty Chandler. Shroud being chased. Will come back on the sideline. They're going to say that one is incomplete. They were looking for Ramel Keaton, the true freshman, the early enrollee. A four-star wide receiver, the 14th ranked wide receiver in the country. Tries to get that foot down. Probably a good call. Not sure if we have any replay. Well, with 2.17 to go in the opening quarter here at the Tennessee Spring Game, there's a break of the action. We'll step aside back in a moment. Well, Jeremy Pruitt in his second season as the Tennessee head coach, of course, came over from Alabama to take over this program after what was uh, kind of a debacle trying to get a head coach. Finally landed on Coach Pruitt. They went 5-7 and seven last year, broke a winless streak in the conference. They picked up two wins, and then along the way, they also picked up one of their favorite players, T. Martin. Led them to a national championship, finally making it back home to Knoxville. And some other changes with the staff. Jim Chaney, of course, well known that he take out, takes over as offensive coordinator coming from the University of Georgia. And Derek Ansley, the defensive coordinator and the defensive back coach, was here in 2012 when Sal Sanceri was the DC for Tennessee. But uh, Derek Ansley, a guy you know well, coached at Alabama with Coach Saban and Coach Pruitt was on that staff as well. As this punch returned by Bryce Thompson. Yeah, I think a lot of people will look at those names and obviously. Most people know about Jim Chaney, and everybody here knows about T. Martin, but Derek Ansley is one of the sharpest young coordinators in the game, and that's that was a huge get for Jeremy Pruitt. He's a guy who GA with Jeremy Pruitt at Alabama, then went to the, the Raiders for a while, and John Gruden loves this guy. He raves about Derek Ansley every time you talk to him about how much he respects this guy. And uh, Coach Pruitt said he has he's, he's lucky to have a lot of guys on the staff who could be the coordinators, but nobody knows what he's thinking better than Derek Ansley. And that's why he tapped him to be the coordinator. And uh, uh, big things to come for this guy. He's an extremely sharp young coach. The players absolutely love him. Love this guy. Love playing for him. It's been last year in the NFL with the Raiders. Got a taste of coaching in the pro ranks. And he says, you know, it, it gives him a little street cred with these college kids. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's where these tries, guys are trying to get to, obviously. Yeah, we talked to him about the differences between the college and the pro game. And he said, you know, one thing interesting, in, in, in pro you have to have two or three calls ready at all times because Philip Rivers might walk up to the line and when he sees your set, he's going to change the play two or three times to get in the right set. College, you don't see as much of that. So he's, uh, he's getting back to the basics for these guys. But you said it, they love his credentials. Second down for the white team. Jared Garantano under pressure, and they'll blow him down as a Sack. 
Looks like Nigel Warrior, the senior. Boy, Nigel Warrior is a guy that he looks like he's ready for a just a huge season. The senior out of Duluth, Georgia. Been a real leader this spring for the team. Second last year in total tackles. Now that's the strength of this team, in my opinion, is that secondary. That back end has a ton of experience. Obviously, you had two true freshmen get a ton of time at corner last year in Elante Taylor and in Bryce Thompson. But they're, uh, that, I think that, that will be a, a very, very strong unit for the Vols this season. Excited to watch those guys in the secondary. Garantano will scoot close to the first down, give him a dozen yards, but that'll be at the end of the first quarter. Derek Ansley in this defense. Boy, he's got some weapons to play around with. Well, there's a guy that uh, Jeremy Pruitt, the Tennessee Volunteer football team, the Tennessee football fans would love to see back in action next year. That is Trey Smith who has just dealt with a bizarre situation with blood clots forming in his lungs and has cost him to step aside from football a couple of times now. Actually played in a total of seven games last year, but the blood clots returned, and they're trying to work through that, figure out how they keep coming back and what they can do to prevent that. But he is such a super, super talented guy. Um, he's a difference maker on the offensive line. Not playing today, but he has been going through these practices and whatnot. They feel like they're getting close. But offensive line certainly is something that they are concerned about here in Knoxville. Had some issues a year ago, but there is help on the way. There's absolutely help on the way. And you mentioned Trey Smith. I mean, this is a guy who came in as a true freshman and was absolutely mauling folks, right? If you know Jim Chaney and the way he likes to play football, he wants a power running game. He wants to dominate people at the line of scrimmage. Obviously, that was not the identity of this Tennessee football team last year and probably not in the spring game. But the good news is help is on the way, right? There's only two guys of the, of the five projected starters that we showed you there. Obviously, Trey Smith's a big question mark with no one really fully understanding exactly what his situation will be next year, probably including Trey. Uh, but if they can find a way to get him back and some of these freshmen pan out the way I think they're going to, uh, I think it'll be very exciting and a, a big improvement from last season. You see there, Wanye Morris, one, one of the two five-star tackles they signed last year. I, I think after talking to Coach Pruitt and some of the staff that there's a good chance they're going to have two five-star true freshman tackles on either end in Wanye Morris and in Darnell Wright, who was the number two uh, overall offensive lineman coming out this year. So help is on the way, and I think there'll be a lot of positive signs on that offensive line. Wanye Morris. 13th best player in the country. You say he just understands the game at a high level for a freshman. There's Marquez Callaway. They'll say that'll be good enough for the first down over the 30 yard line, a gain of nine. Callaway was 37 catches a year ago, his senior season coming up. Yeah, here's some good protection right here. This has kind of been Garantano's MO is if you give him time, he can find guys open. Uh, you know, never really got jumpy as much as he got hit last year. He would sit in there and continue to take hits over and over. That one is incomplete. The other guy we didn't really talk much about is Brandon Kennedy, who played one game last year and then got hurt in a practice before game two. And he has been out, and he's been practicing as well. Yep. They just want to temper him and get him, make sure he is fully prepared for the 20. 19 season when they all reconvene back in August, but that'll be another big addition. Yeah, Coach Pruitt's really taken the better safe than sorry mentality. He's about six months off an ACL now, and uh, you know you, you want to give those things time. And even though he's been practicing, he's probably do, been doing a lot of activities. Probably best to you know wait a few more months to make sure you have him for the season because I think again he'll be a big upgrade at the center position. Uh, for this team and, and man that center position especially in this type of offense that Jim Chaney runs is so important you can't underestimate how vital it is to have that guy in the middle who gets everybody on the same page obviously Brandon Kennedy is a, a fifth year senior a guy who's been around the block a few times he, I think he's the guy to kind of get these guys in line if you have a good center and everybody's on the same page it's amazing how you can really elevate the play of an offensive line especially when you're, you have two projected freshmen at the bookends of tackles Third down and nine for the white team. Garantano steps back to pass, and that one looks like it's deflected at the line of scrimmage. So far, Garantano in this game is three of eight for 16 yards. Yeah, tough numbers for Garantano. He's had some pressure, as we've been talking about. 
Not a whole offensive line here. There's Daniel Petuli coming off the edge. One of their best players on defense, another guy who has a ton of snaps. And I, I always love, I, I know 81, 81's pain right there. He's probably thinking I'm wearing a black jersey. You shouldn't be running me over like that. But I can tell you, the defensive players don't care if you have a black jersey on, especially if you're blocking. If you're blocking them, they're going to try to run you over. So it doesn't do much good to have a black jersey on when you're trying to block a powerful linebacker trying to get to the quarterback. During practice, that uh, that can pretty much uh, stir up the dust a little bit, oh, right? Oh, there's no doubt. That's Coach Pruitt said some of the biggest fights they've had so far <laughs> are when guys in black jerseys, and that's frustrating. I'm an old old lineman, and you have a big linebacker in a black jersey who comes and lays a big lick on you, and you're thinking, hey, I'm taking it easy on you. You got a black jersey on, but then they'll still they'll still lay licks on you. That's, that'll start a fight right there. <laughs> Derek Garantano in one of those black jerseys. He's trying to get it cranked up here in the spring game. Back here in Knoxville, Tennessee for the orange and white game. I'm here with a former volunteer, Josh Dobbs. A lot of you at home are going to know him. And I have to ask you a lot of changes within this program since you've left. What are your thoughts on what Jeremy Pruitt has done and where he's taking this program? I'm excited to see what the future holds. I know um, last year, obviously, like wins wise, um, it wasn't where we all wanted it to be, but the project on the field, you definitely can see the improvement. You see the guys buying in, bodies are changing. So I'm excited. Coach Pruitt, I got a chance to play against him twice in college. So I know the type of discipline and physicality, football teams he trains. So I'm excited. You know, he's a, a football coach. You know, he just wants to have a good football team, successful team, and just be top in the nation. So they're fun to watch, and I'll be excited to see what this season has in store. We tuned in every Saturday for sure. That's awesome. And ESPN's FPI has Tennessee as the preseason ranked 15th team. That's crazy after not making a bowl game last year. What does that tell you about the promise of this team and this new coaching staff? All right, that goes to say the potential is there, you know, and the talented coaching staff we have around our players is definitely there. It's definitely in place. So guys are buying in. Guys are working hard. You can see the improvements from last spring to this spring just watching the game. So I'm excited. I know the future's bright. Um, I'm excited to see Jared play this season, of course. So it's cool seeing you know, the freshmen come in, other juniors and seniors taking on leadership roles. And the framework's there, so they'll, they'll make it happen. I know you have a good relationship with the quarterback, Jarrett Garantano. What words of advice have you given him as he now takes over this team for another year? My biggest thing to him has just been to be yourself. You know, he's already a fierce competitor. He's already a tough kid. So just be you. Let your team embody your um, personality, your mentality. Let them take, on, to take that on and let it show throughout the team. So you can tell his leadership skills, guys are rallying behind him. I think he's grown leaps and strides since when I saw him as a freshman and even last year to this year. So um, he's, he's a good kid. He's a fierce competitor, so he'll be okay. I know it's cool for you to be back here, and you and I were talking about this earlier, over three hours before the spring game, and the fans are lining up outside. What's your experience been like with the Tennessee faithful, and how cool is it to come back here? The fans are unreal. You know, I remember in our spring games, we did them at 3, and we would do autograph signings around noon, and fans would be lined up at 8 p.m. the night before, sleeping outside the stadium to make sure they were in line to get their autograph signed. So the fans here are amazing. The support's amazing. This place is an amazing place the people here in Knoxville and just the UT faithful they're definitely special so it's framework in place to be the top program in the country and um, they're definitely on their way before we let you go I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you how you're doing how this offseason is going for you it's going well a lot of hard work um, been training literally since uh, January so excited we start back on Tuesday excited to get back to work get around the fellas get around the guys and um, start our next journey to bring home a Super Bowl so definitely excited to get up to Pittsburgh get back to work but it's been going really well all right well best of luck with that thank you so much for your time Josh no problem thanks for having me Dave thank you Molly and just watching that interview obviously Peyton Manning could be the, the greatest ambassador for Tennessee the university and, and, but Josh Dobbs would be a close second no doubt <laughs> Josh Dobbs is absolutely a class act and a guy I, I uh, competed against or false start on the offense, number 77, five-yard penalty, remains third down. As you hear the call there on the field, but what an aerospace engineering, yes. Dave, or something yes. like that. He measured him. The guy is a extremely intelli intelligent uh, guy in the classroom and also on the field. He was, he really uh, was a, a tough guy to bring down. Obviously, kind of a dual threat guy. Really threw it well, and uh, but you nailed it. A great ambassador, Peyton Manning, might be. The greatest ambassador for any university ever. <laughs> right. So that's a tough comparison, right, to go against Peyton Manning, but he's uh, he's a good one. Pass is caught underneath, going to Jacquez Jones, who makes the reception. 
Akwa is a sophomore out of Clearwater, Florida. Brian Maurer is looking pretty good at quarterback. Yeah, he sure is. He's a guy they're excited about. I think, you know, he's the type of guy when you turn on the tape, uh, you know, he, he's a he's a player. He likes making plays. Uh, give you know they, they want to spread him out a little bit, give him an opportunity to run around, kind of a dual threat guy. But they're excited about where this young quarterback's heading. If he can find some comfort levels, you see him kind of get to stretch his legs there a little bit. He's an early enrollee, the freshman out of Ocala, Florida, went to Westport High School. Was an elite 11 quarterback, four-star recruiting ranking. Threw for over 3,500 yards last year, but 7,600 yards in his career with 64 touchdowns. There was one game where he threw for 513 yards and three touchdowns and then rushed for another 195 yards. Wow. And you see Coach Chaney, he talked to us about this. He said, this guy loves hurry up. He likes tempo. He likes pace. He likes simple reads. Uh, so he, he, he told us on the front end he was going to employ some hurry up once Maurer got in the game. And you see, Maurer's looking comfortable in hurry up. A true freshman, he's up there barking instructions at the line of scrimmage. And he's got this offense heading in a good direction. I think it's kind of an open competition between Maurer and Shroud to figure out who the backup to Garantano will be this season. Certainly a quick, titch, uh, quick twitch quarterback in Brian Maurer. So he hands it off to Chip Omer. Gain of a yard on the play. But how about how about combining for 708 yards of offense in one high school game? His team had 876 yards of offense, which was a Florida high school record and finished up being top 10 nationally. Wow, that's a lot of yards right there. That's uh, some video game yes. numbers right there from Howard. That's pretty incredible. 10th play of this drive. Bowers five out of five on his opening possession. Jeremy Banks brought down by Greg Emerson. And, you know, we talked about this coaching staff. Be remiss not to talk about Chris Winkie as well, who is handling the quarterbacks now. Uh, Tyson Helton, who was here, was the quarterback coach and OC. But Chris Winkie, he, it's his job. He's going right. to handle these quarterbacks, and Jim Chaney's going to worry about calling plays. And that's an adjustment that a lot of coaching staffs are making. A few years ago, they enabled uh, staffs to add an extra assistant and you know different staffs use that in a lot of places and now you're seeing a lot of staffs are adding that dedicated quarterbacks coach so they can let the coordinator really spend time game planning figure out what they're doing that week and let the quarterback coach really focus in day in and day out of looking at these guys footwork drilling with them uh, you know I think it's so important a lot of people just assume that an offensive coordinator is a great quarterback coach right uh, and that's not always the case. Jim Chaney, I'm sure, is, but that's not always the case. I think it's great to have a guy like Chris Winkie, obviously a guy who won the Heisman, won a national championship, has done it at the highest level, uh, to, to just be focusing on that quarterback position. Because let's face it, the quarterback position is by far the most important position on the field. As much as that pains me as an O-lineman to say, it's very true, and it, it's only becoming more and more true with the way offense is played. Paxton Brooks will attempt this field goal from 20 yards out, and he splits the upright. So the orange team behind the true freshman, Brian Maurer. Even Jared Carantano has to like the look of his new friend. The orange leading the whites. 3-0. Boy, what a gorgeous day here on the banks of the Tennessee River at foothills of the Smoky Mountains on Rocky Top. Some ball Navy folks out and about today. What a day to get the boat out. Almost time to get all the boats out, right? It is. It's a beautiful day here. It's a perfect spring football weather. You know, sometimes you get 80, 90 degree days at these things. But this is this is pretty nice. The fans are relaxing back and leisurely enjoying a beautiful spring day. About time. It was a cold winter. Smagley will kick it off. Taken by Thompson around the five yard line. They will put him down around the 22 yard line. Hey, don't forget next Saturday, there's more SEC spring football coming your way. We'll head to Athens. It's the Georgia G Day game from Sanford Stadium coming your way two o'clock Eastern time. You can also catch that on the ESPN app, and that'll be a fun day of football. We're also putting some of our ESPN announcers right. in some um, referee jerseys. I heard we might have one on the sidelines. And Molly McGrath has the, the opportunity street. to do that. And I know that, uh, Molly, if your mic's open down there, uh, how are you feeling? Are you nervous yet? No way. I'm excited. My mom is nervous. She's afraid I'm going to get trucked over. <laughs> but I know they're going to take really good care of us. I'm excited. Have you been conditioning, Molly? I'm just telling you, being a referee, is, it's, it's tough. I did that a few years ago, and I was the umpire. 
So I did get trucked over, by the way. Hopefully we can't find footage of that. But, I, uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's a lot of running, so you better be ready. I pulled a muscle a little bit in the calf. So. I've, yeah, I've been doing a lot of cardio and a lot of backpedaling lately I like that. to get myself ready, so don't even worry about it. Like what are you going to do about a uniform? They, they give that to you? How does that work? So they ask for very precise, very invasive measurements. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they are going to make a uniform for us. It is custom, so hopefully I get to keep it and I can wear it on Sundays or maybe Saturdays if I'm not working a random game so that I can feel really important Yeah, for my just couch. walk around town. Just walk around town. Throw with flags your, yeah. at people who upset me. Why not? <laughs> you know, it makes a great, it doubles as a great Halloween costume, too. So you can always keep it, put some sunglasses on, then you're the blind referee, you know, so. <laughs> oh, no. Only love for the referees. No, no doubt. No doubt. It's, uh, it, you do get to keep it. But, well, maybe you're not supposed to. I kept mine, though. Don't tell anyone. Well, that'll be a lot of fun next Saturday in Athens, Georgia, at the Georgia G-Day game. Can Georgia keep it going? Get back to the college football playoff again. Oh, there's a strike. That's a nice throw. Out to Jawan Jennings, best throw of the day for Garantano. Absolutely. Garantano has time in the pocket, gets settled down. A little skinny post pattern right there to Jennings. Watch him step into that throw and put that ball right on the money. A beautiful throw. As you see, both teams now are in two-minute mode. That's just how the game's going to go, is that under four minutes, you're going to see both teams run two-minute at all times. Carantano steps up, drops it off underneath. That one goes to Ty Chandler. Boy, Ty just with that great speed. They, they say he's a little bit under 4-4, explosive. They want him to be just a little bit more physical this year. I think this is where Ty Chandler really shines, is in this shotgun-type game, give him a little space. Get him out on the edge. The guy has true speed. He's a game breaker, and he's had he had some flashes on film where you look at this guy and you think he has a chance to take a big step as one of the elite runners in this league. He's a really is more of a change of pace type back, but I think he's so talented the coaches just can't get him off the field. Garantano going up top, looking to the end zone and overthrows. Josh Palmer. Ty Chandler, you know, we talk about him as a running back, but really good out of the backfield, catching 19 passes last year. But interesting, though, that all 19 of those receptions occurred during a four-game stretch right in the middle of the year against Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, South Carolina. So he had no receptions in the first four and no receptions in the last four, but 19 right there in the middle. Well, knowing the way Jim Chaney runs offense, I guarantee you that's something he's going to want to get corrected. He's going to want to get Ty Chandler involved in the passing game early and often. That handoff goes to Tim Jordan, the other Tennessee returning tailback. He'll pick up nine yards. Jordan rushed for 522 yards last season, second best number on this team. Another in two minute mode right now, but I think this is something you'll see a lot more of if you're a Tennessee fan is these gun sets. You know, a lot of under center last year. You're going to see more and more gun runs, maybe some pistol action with the quarterback kind of in between that underneath and gun. There goes Jordan, he'll be hit inside the 10. They'll spot him out of bounds around the eight, give him 13 yards on that carry. Yeah, nice to see the white offense kind of get rolling here. I'm sure it's a welcome sign for Tennessee fans. This offense is going to have to be better this season. If, again, this team wants to get where it wants to go, and that number two right there is going to be a big reason why. Tennessee rushing last year. They averaged 129 yards a game. That was dead last in the Southeastern Conference and 113th in the country. Offside on the defense, number 13, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's, a, that's, another, uh, that's another marquee signal of a, a veteran uh, quarterback as you're going to see a lot of offsides. That means you're using the snap count well. I guarantee there's one guy right there that does not like to see offsides penalties. Jeremy Pruitt, turnovers and penalties. At a, at a, that's a bird in his saddlebags right there. He does not like those things. Just under two minutes to go here before halftime. First team offense has been blanked by the first team defense to this point. Garantano ends the streak though. Pass is caught in the end zone. That's a touchdown to Dominic Wood Anderson, the tight end who many people think will be much more involved in the offense in the coming season. Yeah, Dominic Wood Anderson, he's an old basketball player, and they, you kind of use that size right there, almost just kind of boxes out there a quick slant, uses that big body. This guy's an absolute beast, by the way, if you see him in person. A nice route there, boxes out, shows his big body. 
A nice little RPO action, run pass option. Garantano keeps his eye on that linebacker as soon as he takes a step up, pops it right over the top for an easy touchdown. A couple of touchdowns last year for DWA. 17 catches, 140 yards. And I, this is somebody Jim Chaney absolutely wants to get more involved. You know, he, he had a, a few pretty successful tight ends in his tenure at Georgia, big guys. Again, you know, what does Jim Chaney want? He wants big guys just like DWA right there and big old linemen who can churn the road and also tight ends who can become matchup nightmares in those run sets. And I think Dominic Wynn Anderson is exactly that type of guy who could be a, a matchup nightmare. Hey, tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern, we'll have the second game of a big three-game series between number 19 Georgia, number 7 Alabama, Road Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Alabama beat Georgia earlier today 7-1 to one over on the capstone. Of course, you can always catch SEC softball on the ESPN app, so you can watch it anywhere you would like. At Sunday, 7 o'clock Eastern. A good drive right there for Jared Garantano to kind of get the offense settled down. Obviously, you're running vanilla offense at your first time in front of the big crowd. I think that was a, a good example of what this offense can be when it's humming a nice clean drive right there using a lot of their weapons. Ty Chandler back there to return that kick. Jared Garantano to this point. He has 7 of 14, 68 yards, and one touchdown. Lamar was just solid in his opening drive. The true freshman early enrollee, 5 of 5, 59 yards. Let him down to the five-yard line, had a field goal. And he's back on the field for a second possession. He'll step up in the pocket, see what he provides. He's got some wheels. He's got some wheels. And you know, in this day and age of football, it's nice to have a quarterback who can scoot a little bit. I'll tell you, as an O-lineman, you really appreciate a quarterback who can evade a sack and make something positive. And that's, uh, this guy's definitely got that characteristic. He'll dump it off to Jeremy Banks. You know, 10 early enrollees for this Tennessee football team this year. Back in your days at, at Alabama, did you, was, it, was that a high number? Did it was just a, starting to become a thing, Yeah. right? I mean, now, obviously, that's pretty common to have that many early enrollees. So many guys kind of skipping the second semester of their senior year, which, you know, I, I gosh, that was one of the greatest times of my life. <laughs> I wouldn't want to miss that. I, I love the second semester of my senior year. But I, uh, I uh, you know, it's definitely a trend in college football. There's no doubt it gives you a better chance to play as a freshman, right? It is so difficult to come in the summer to learn the offense and then be able to play at a freshman, especially if you're playing, you know, uh, one of the, the more difficult positions like quarterback, like you know, offensive line. It's it's a tough uh, it's a tough challenge. You know, you've seen some you know running backs and and uh, skill position players do it. I always give the skill position players a hard time. You know, running back, you just hand the ball and tell them to run. You know, O line quarterback a little more complicated. Boy. Claveris Crouch is a guy that uh, certainly a lot of people will be looking at. The early enrollee from Charlotte, North Carolina, was a, a dynamite two-way guy yep. in high school. They've got him playing at the linebacker position right now, but he's one. Of, he's just a special-looking athlete. He is. He's a very good athlete. You know, a guy who was injured his senior year, so didn't really play much. Hurt his ankle. Uh, I think the first or second game of his senior year, and so wasn't able to to play much. And now they moved him to linebacker full time. But you see. Just a tremendous athlete and a guy who the coaching staff is very excited about. So, I mean, you're thinking this guy, even when he played defense in high school, he played defensive end, his first real action at linebacker. It's going to take him some time to really get comfortable. But he's a guy that I think maybe towards the second half of that season, you're going to start to see him push him for a job at linebacker. Look at his arms, man. That guy is a true freshman. He was a 2017 Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of North Carolina, the number two ranked athlete in the country, 39th ranked overall recruit. There's some Dave Neal biceps right yeah. there. That's first thing I thought of. No doubt. He's on my program. <laughs> Garantano dumps it off underneath to Tim Jordan, and he's out to the 25, 26 yard line, close to the first down. Definitely not plant based. No. Definitely not. You gotta, you gotta have some protein you in there. You gotta have some right? protein to get biceps like that. Garantano. 
He's going up top. Oh, it's off the hands of Josh Palmer and out of bounds. That's a play you got to make if you're Josh Palmer. That's a beautiful ball by Garantano. Puts that ball right along the sideline. Oh, yeah. Right good in the throw. bread basket. That's a beautiful throw in the tight coverage. You got to make that play for your quarterback. And that's that's all part of establishing the trust. You know, they have a few established receivers and Marquez Callaway and Juwan Jennings, but they're kind of looking who's that third guy who's going to step up for us in those three wide receiver sets and really become that cornerstone. I think Josh Palmer's a good candidate. He's going to have to make that play, though. That goes to Ty Chandler. He'll take it out to the 36-yard line. It's close to the first down. They will give him the first down. Always some loose spotting in these spring games. You know, that give him the first down. Under a minute to go here before halftime. Dominic Wood Anderson on that reception. They'll spot him at the 43-yard line. Boy, Dominic Wood Anderson coming out of junior college. He's at Arizona Western Junior College before coming here to Tennessee. Was a 15th-ranked JUCO prospect in 2017 and considered the number one tight end coming out of the junior college ranks. 6'4", 265, and can run. That's a, that's a formula you can work with if you're Jim Cheney. Dump it off underneath. That should be good enough for the first down. Chandler makes the catch there. Again, you already see Ty Chandler being used a lot in the passing game. I think he'll absolutely be their passing uh, down back. Would see, would expect to see him in on almost every third down this season uh, just because of his athleticism in the backfield. Garantano flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run, and that one is almost picked off. He was trying to find Jawan Jennings. Yeah, we talked, we talked to uh, Jared about one of the things he wanted to improve on, and he said, I really want to improve on throwing on the run, being able to see the field. As you see Marquez Callaway right here, he was open, but uh, couldn't find him and overshot his man. I think it was Jennings just by a little bit in the flat. Garantano had a solid season, but still places to work on his game and improve. Callaway, the senior out of Warner Robins, Georgia. Well, he has got a full head of hair. He's been working on since fifth grade. It That's is some dedication. He fifth grade. Hadn't cut his hair since fifth grade. That's some Samson stuff right there. I like that. Garantano going up top again. Has Callaway stays on his feet all the way down to the three yard line. Didn't miss Callaway this time. 52 uh, yards. Beautiful throw by Garantano as you watch Callaway right here. Beat his man off the line of scrimmage. Just a straight go route. Edwards looked like he thought he had help over the top, but he certainly did not. As Callaway just burns him for the big gain, and man, they're going to give him a hard time about that in the film room, about not scoring that touchdown. Go back to him in the corner of the end zone. That one is incomplete. Yeah, that's that's when you know your friends right there with your quarterback. Your quarterback gives you a chance to redeem yourself. That was a that was a run play that Garantano just made a one-on-one -on -one check with Callaway to run a little bit of a fade route, but. Did not work out. Now you're kind of in an interesting situation with 11 seconds. Obviously, got some timeouts, so you can run the football. Be interesting to see what Jim Cheney does here. Red zone offense will certainly be an emphasis this year. Find a way to turn some of those field goals into touchdowns. Tennessee averaged 22.8 points a game last year, 13th in the conference, 108th in the country. Inside handoff, that goes to Tim Jordan. He'll be about a yard shy. And there's the timeout with four seconds. <laughs> See, now you got four seconds left, so probably only time for one more play. They called the timeout, but I think they're just going to line up and play ball. Coach Pruitt's like, yeah, let's just play. We don't need to talk about this. <laughs> Coach Pruitt, a very matter-of-fact guy, if you know him. He's a lot of fun to talk to in meetings and is a guy who is always very transparent about the state of his program. <laughs> he almost he almost cringe sometimes when he's telling you the truth sometimes. That's right. It's like, <laughs> ooh, I don't know if I needed to hear that or not. <laughs> he's a great guy to be around, though, and everybody loves the state of his program. You talk to the people who work for him and are under him. In play of this drive, Garantano to the back of the end zone, and that one is caught. They're going to say touchdown. It went to Josh Palmer. Man, a great job by Josh Palmer right there. 
Alante Taylor added in pretty good coverage, the talented young sophomore. Garantano just gave him a chance, and Josh Palmer, watch him reach out here and just make a play for his quarterback, a contested football, one quick bobble, and grabs it down for the touchdown. That'll be a highlight real play there for Josh Palmer. We talked about dropping that football earlier. That I think he more than redeemed himself on that big, and that's the way you want to take it into halftime right there. That was They went for it all there, elected not to kick the field goal, keep the offense on the field, and Josh Palmer made a pick. Magley, his point after is up and good. Josh Palmer last year led the conference, averaging 21 yards per reception. This one only went for a yard. <laughs> yeah, killed his average right there, but nice job corralling that ball, pinning it against his hip. So Jared Garantano finishes the half 12 of 22 for 141 yards and two touchdowns. Let's go down to Molly. Coach, what was it like to not have to call plays and just observe? Well, it's been like this all spring. So, um, you know, offensively, we, we gave up some sacks. And I'm not so sure that there wouldn't be some sacks out there, but we extended some plays. We're holding the ball too long. Defensively, gave up a couple of big plays, which resulted in points. You mentioned uh, some of your quarterback play. How would you grade that in the first half? Well, we made a couple of plays there at the end of the half, but got to get the ball out of her hand a little faster. Got to do a better job protecting. Um, had a couple of drops there, so I don't know. It, it, it's, it improved as the, as the half went. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Dave. Thank you, Molly. Jared Garantano under his fourth offensive coordinator in four years. Jim Chaney, they're still getting to know each other, but it looked like they were clicking pretty good toward the end of that first half. Halftime on the way, 14-3, wide out in front. Welcome to the SEC Halftime Report, Tennessee Volunteers Spring Game. I am Peter Burns, and this is the second year under Jeremy Pruitt, and he's hoping to build upon the glimmers of hope that the Tennessee team had last year, especially with Jared Garantano, the way he looked in the Auburn game, throwing for over 300 yards and two touchdowns. Our Jordan Rogers was in Knoxville for the Tennessee Spring Tour to catch up with the QB. I'm feeling like a rock star. Rock star. Starters, I love the jacket and the hat. Yeah, throwback. <laughs> a little throwback, Coach former full uh, throwback. A little. Did you get it out of his closet? Uh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> You're on your fourth offensive coordinator, second year as a full-time starter. How much have you grown? I think I've learned a lot more football. A lot more, I've adapted a lot more. So it's definitely only for the positives. How about off the field? Feel like you've grown? Uh, absolutely. I've been around Coach Pruitt, and he preaches leadership, 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 and I think that I'm full effect into that now. How about some of these weapons you got? Jump ball and caught for Quez Halloway. Jermaine Jennings, touchdown, Josh Palmer. We got a lot, a lot of tall, big body receivers, and I'm excited to get to work with them. And we have some good running backs, two tight ends, and we just have weapons all around. You're a Northeast Jersey boy. What brought you down here to see this? I just love this atmosphere. I love the people here, and there's really just not much better. Did you look up to any quarterbacks growing up in Northeast Jersey? Yeah, it's going to sound crazy, but Peyton Manning was always my favorite. Uh, I always had the 18 jersey on, and then I'm looking at baby pictures. I have it on, and then I'm like, sheesh, I'm here right now where he was. I was at a practice the other day. I look around at the coaches you have. Chris Winkie, T. Martin's here this year. You pick those guys' brains, too. What has T taught you so far? He's only been here a little bit. He's working with the wide receivers. Have you learned anything from him? Because he's got a ring <laughs> from winning the natty here. Yeah, absolutely. Trust me, I know. <laughs> but yeah, every day. I mean, I'm in Coach T's office all the time. And there's no one like him in the whole entire business and office, really just because he's been here. He's doing what I've done. And he was a quarterback. And I'm trying to get to where he was. What about you? What do, what do you like off the field? I love sneakers. I love my family. What's his shoes? Yeah. What are these? These Vapor Maxes, these old school ones. How many pairs of shoes do you have? Probably a good 65, 70. I, listen, but I've been the same shoe size since I was 13. Oh. Crazy, yeah. I was a size 13 when I was 13, haven't, haven't grown You since. live on campus or off campus? Off campus. I was going to say, you're not going to find a closet on campus big enough for 60 no. some pairs of shoes. <laughs> yeah, a lot are in the living room. What's this right here? I keep seeing these torches all over campus. Yeah, uh, this is the torch, really just symbolizes the torch bearer. This is the actual torch. And really, essentially, we're just talking about how we're going to lead the way and volunteer for the following years and for the people to come. What about your legacy here? You got a couple more years to decide what that's going to be, but 
on the football field at least, but what do you want people to remember you for at the University of Tennessee, both on the field and off when it's all said and done? Yeah, growing up, my mom and my dad always taught me that football was just a stepping stone just for other things in life. So I, thought, I think that community service and helping those in need are definitely going to be things that I want to be remembered for. And of course, the football thing is going to come around and hopefully win a lot more games as my years go on. But just being able to help others, just like the Torchbearer says, and continue that legacy. You can say it, though. We want conference championships here, right? right? Yeah. National championships. We want, we want everything, guys, yeah. Yeah. Well, you got you got practice here in a second, huh? We got to get you out of here. <laughs> yeah, can't get yelled at. <laughs>
won a, a national championship here in 1998 that many of the fans watching this game will remember. There's the handoff going to Jeremy Banks, who's back in at running back. That was against your beloved Seminoles, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I didn't know you were going to go there. Yeah, that was, uh, that was tough. But, but, hey, but 1999. That's right. Well, Banks turned around, and Chris Winkie, who's coaching also the quarterbacks. Staff, right. Good segue there. You know, this is SEC country. We don't. We don't talk about that. We, we talk about 98. That was, <laughs> I was eight years old. I was young and impressionable. I remember that that team well. That was, they were stacked. That was fun to watch. Here's Maurer, who will have his pass picked off. White team. And Jalen McCullough dancing around. He'll be wrestled to the turf inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, that's, that's the fire and ice of a young freshman quarterback. You like Mauer's confidence in the first half out there slinging it around. Here makes a very ill-advised throw. Doesn't see the safety McCullough ever see him. Just throws it right to him. An easy interception. A nice job. This is a, a Jeremy Pruitt hallmark right here. You immediately see the defense turn around and try to create a tunnel. That's Jeremy Pruitt says anytime you get the ball on defense, you want to score, right? You want to find an opportunity to get that ball in the end zone. And you see McCullough there fighting for extra yards, trying to get that ball in, his, in the end zone, but sets this white offense up with a great opportunity. That was early enrollee to early enrollee. That's right. Jalen McCullough, the four-star, ranked it. Number 11 safety in America. Here is Garantano to the end zone and the checkerboard. That one is caught by Jawan Jennings for a touchdown from seven yards out. A beautiful throw right here by Garantano. This is a pattern that I'm sure these guys have worked on hundreds, if not thousands of times in practice. It's something that is very reliant on timing, understanding when. To, to make that turn, if you're Jawan Jennings, and turn that body shield off the defender, Elante Taylor. A beautiful throw and catch right there. That's that's uh, that's pretty easy if you're Garantano. Be a nice job executing. One play, one touchdown. That's the kind of drives you like if you're an offensive guy. Point after is up and good with 12.08. Yeah, so again. So we will step aside for a moment. The white team has put together three consecutive touchdowns and lead at 21 to three now. Jawan Jennings, boy, he's a guy that has been around here for 14 years, it feels like, the fifth year <laughs> senior. He's having a lot of fun on his last spring football game. We'll step aside. 1998 was a really good year in Knoxville. The Tennessee Volunteers under the direction of T. Martin Went undefeated in the regular season, had a chance to play for it all. And what did they do? They knocked off the Florida State Seminoles. Peerless Price with the 79-yard touchdown reception to seal the win, 23-16 over the Knolls. And there was a happy man <laughs> with a chuckle. Philip Fulmer joins us up here in our broadcast position. And, uh, T. Martin back in the fold right now. It's got to be exciting to be back with your quarterback. Who led back you at time. home, yep, yeah. yeah. It's, it's great to have him back. And today, a lot of those guys who played on that team are back here for the spring game. Coach Pruitt's done a great job of making the guys welcome. So it's, it's been good. You know, talk, talk to me about year two. And, and as a coach, you know something about, we always hear coaches say year one to year two, yeah. biggest improvement. What do you think is going to happen in year two in terms of making those strides? Well, one, we've recruited better. You know, we've got some guys that are big enough and fast enough on, on, the, on the team now. And there is noticeable here, a couple of guys making some plays, you know, here at, during the spring. Uh, number two, I think, you know, Jeremy is more comfortable. Uh, there's a lot of transition there, although he had done a lot of things as an assistant coach. And still, until you put the hat on, it's, it's different. And he's uh, turned loose the defensive coordinator position. Responsibilities yeah. gave them to Derek Hansley. I thought it was a great move for him. Allows him to see the whole picture and not be so tied up in one side or the other of the ball. So that's that's good. Uh, just from our physical standpoint, uh, we've had great off seasons and the kids have really worked hard. So we're bigger and stronger and and we're building depth. We don't have nearly enough depth yet, but we're, we're getting there. Coach, I, I know that anyone who really knows you and, and knows your teams from back in the heyday talks about one thing. They talk about how tough those teams were. You yeah. knew that if you played Tennessee, you were going to get hit in the mouth, right? 
What, what, what about Coach Pruitt's toughness attracted you, and how do you think that's going so far? Well, it's going very well. He, he he's, he's a tough guy. You know, you just you know a little bit of that was probably because I played in the offensive line. You know, quote tough guys, but that's right. You can be a tough I'll guy. I'll back that up. You, you'll back that up. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly right. right. But you'd be a tough guy in any position, you know. And, and as a secondary guy, he he was tough. He fought his way to the play in time that he did get at Alabama. He's fought his way from, you know, coaching in high school and teaching in kindergarten to the top of the sure. top of the world here. You I know, remember when he worked in the weight room a long yeah. time ago, man. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's done whatever it took to get there. And, and that, to me, that's the, what he wants from his players. You know. Uh, more effort, more more toughness, and, and he's instilling that in this football team. We are night and day from the first day of spring last year to where we are now. And what that comes out in in wins and losses it depends on you know the, the staying healthy and the guys playing well and all those kinds of things. But uh, he, he turned them loose today. They're blitzing. They're doing everything that they want to do on either side of the ball. Where back in the day we would try to be entertaining a little bit on the spring game and put the defense at a disadvantage. Of course, him being a defensive guy, I guess that's part of that. But. Well, let me talk to you about your role now. I mean, you're year two of this athletic directorship, if you will, and obviously a lot of things been going on here. You're, you changed women's basketball coaches. You kept one in town, which I think a lot of folks around here are very thankful you are able to keep Coach Barnes in the fold. But how has this been for you? I mean, I, I know it's been something that you were kind of eyeballing it, and how it's happened. No, I, I've enjoyed it. I mean, most days are great. Not every day, yeah. but most days are great. I know this place. I know the history and the tradition of it and what it means to the people and, and uh, you know, the culture of it. Uh, so I, I, it's, been, it's been fun putting the pieces together. It, it wasn't fun to, you know, change a coach, you know, that I've been a longtime friend with and all that sort of thing. But it was the, you know, felt like the right thing to do and excited about that and really excited. I think we made a real statement athletically. Our, 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 our president's administration stepped up, said, you know, you're not going to come to Tennessee and take our best coaches, you know, uh, our basketball coach. So. Uh, awful proud of not what, just what he's done on the court, but what he's done in the community and the building of those young men. They were a fun basketball team to watch. They were three years ago, though, they were fun. They weren't winning all the time, right. but they were right. fun to watch because they were back on defense, diving for balls, you know, running the plays, doing their thing. And now we're, you know, we, we've got some really good players coming in. He's got to rebuild. Yeah. But uh, it'll be it'll be fun to be with. Well, speaking of coaches, Dave and I have been talking a lot about this coaching staff and kind of how it came together. We feel like this is one of the best coaching staffs in the country. Obviously, there were a, a few big additions. Uh, Jim Chaney was one of the headliners. Obviously, getting T. Martin back into the fold. Derek Ansley, who I think is one of the best young coordinators in the game. Talk about how you think this coaching staff is shaping up, and do you think it's where Jeremy Pruitt wants it? Barrett, I, I think it is. I, I mean, I, I, we started with a good staff. You know, when I interviewed him, he says, I'm going to bring this guy, this guy, this guy. And I'm thinking, you know, there were seven of them. I said, if he brings half of that, that's <laughs> right. going to be a great. And, and he brought seven guys, showed up the second day. And, right. And he's made his adjustments as to how he needed. We had a coach got a head coaching job. He improved. Jim Chaney is a great football Fantastic. coach. Fantastic. Great football yeah. coach. And he knows all the positions. It's not one of those things that just, hey, I'm a quarterback guy. He knows all the positions. Derek Ansley, I cannot tell you how impressed I've been with him. And as you just said, he's, yeah. he's a future all-star. He here, is. You know, or in some other places. But he does his job here. And now we just need to get enough good players to back it up, you know. No doubt. You know, we will. I was uh, had the opportunity to do the Auburn-Tennessee game last year. And watching you at the end of that game, it, it was like you were the head football coach and you just won a national championship. You were Auburn's a tough place to go win. And, and I think and you, yeah, you you yeah. absorbed all that that was. Yeah. Yeah. I did, I did. I mean, I was, I mean, I'm into all the games. I'm into the practices, you know. Coach, coach lets me make a point or two occasionally <laughs> when I when I see something, you know. And and uh, so and we have that good relationship right. that way. I don't think he feels a bit threatened at all. And I'm a, I'm appreciative of that. So. But that game, you know, there was a point in the season when I thought our team was going to overachieve, really. I mean, I really did. Auburn win. We played South Carolina. To the, we should, you know, had, to, had them 21-6, yeah. to six, I think it was, and let them get up. You know, beat Kentucky when, the, you know, a pretty good team. You know, and we just faded at the end. I think we just ran out of gas, you know, as much as anything. But that Jeremy Pruitt did a great job of building that football team to that to the yeah. Auburn game and, and getting the win. Well, one of the things talking to T. Martin, 
which we did yesterday, he talked about you and your coaching philosophy. It was very interesting to me that he said that you were always going to go recruit the best athletes and figure out where they would be best suited to play for you. A running back would be a linebacker, a wide receiver could move to running back. What was your philosophy in terms of putting the best players on the field? Uh, finding the best players and recruiting them, and yeah. the rest of it will work itself out. One year we signed like six running backs, you know, and Two or three of them, it was John, Jamal Lewis and Travis Henry, and the, the others went other places and, and played really, really well for us. And uh, that was my philosophy then: offensive, defensive lineman to offensive line because they were tough yeah. and athletic. Now the difference now is they get that portal. Yeah, you know, right, right. Young, young guys say, "Hey, I don't want to do that. I'm going to." That's go tricky. You know, that makes the things a little bit different. But uh, what now, Wilson, a running back? Did he Al Wilson yeah. was a safety and a running back. back. First play of the first scrimmage that we had, we did. He was a safety. We did a little play action pass. He hits the tailback in the backfield about two yards deep. You know, the ball goes <laughs> down the field. Hey, Al, you're going to be a linebacker. I think that move worked out pretty <laughs> well for Al. Okay. Well, and for Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. That was you know, a good Leonard move. Little. Leonard Little was a stand-up yeah. linebacker, and he was one of the best pass rusher ever in the Southeastern Conference. So you find a place for those guys to play. We went through this a little bit in the in the coaching basketball search. And several of the coaches answered it differently. Yeah, you got to recruit role players. You don't have a couple of great ones in basketball. The ones I like is we don't recruit any role players. They'll they'll find their role. You know, they'll be, <laughs> right. they got to be good enough to play. Well, certainly this is a team that's making strides. This football team, and I think uh, disappointment the way it finished last year. But there were moments like the Auburn yeah. game or the Kentucky game that give these fans some hope, some life. From your perspective, where you sit, what is the biggest thing that has to happen for this team to get back to a ball? Well, we need competition for position on a daily basis, and we don't have that yet. So you're really talking about another recruiting class or two. And you know, we said from the beginning it would take two or three years to cycle cycle through. Um, not that we can't play as play with anybody if on any given day, but you're asking the question: consistently compete for the championship. We, we need more big, strong, fast people, you know, on our football team. And we need more aggressive out of the ones that we got. Coach, I know you got a lot of responsibilities being the athletic director. I got to ask you, how much <laughs> practice tape do you watch? I watch practice tape. <laughs> I, I figured <laughs> I, you can't take the coach no, I mean, out, out of the athletic director. I, 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 mean, like, I like to watch it. I know what sure. I'm looking at. But yeah. I'll also go to basketball practice, and I'll go to – I love baseball. I love our coach that's doing that. Man, was that a great two wins over Georgia? I'm Unbelievable. Sure, we, sure oh, we got beat today. I think yeah. I left. It was three to nothing then. But, you know, two big wins over Georgia. We've got a lot going on here right now with some momentum in our in our program. So I'm pretty excited about where we are. But football is the bread and butter of, of the program here financially. And we got to get that back to where it needs to be. What do you feel like you learned as a football coach that you can apply to being a great athletic director? Well, um, of course, I'm on the other end of the budget thing, you know, right. which, but but, you know, you commit to things that are going to give a rate of return, you know, and and uh, we want all of our sports to do well. But as I said, the biggest thing I, I know is we have invested uh, not just in buildings and facilities and stuff, but we've invested in people here. Jim Cheney coming here from Georgia and getting Derek Ainsley from the Oakland Raiders and those, keeping Rick Barnes, yes, you huge. know, here. Those are big investments, but they're they're what you have to do to maintain maintain the consistency and improve your program, and that's that's what we're doing. That's on a daily basis. And fortunately, you know, we've got administration for the first time in a long time here. Uh, so I, I, I could go back to maybe 03, you know, when I was still the coach. We are so aligned here, from the from the board. To the president, you know, the, to the chancellor, all the way through the athletic director and, and our coaches. Well, I think there is certainly a comfort right now with the Tennessee fans as you just at, talk to them about where the program is, and uh, certainly it's on an upswing. So I want to say thanks for coming by. Thank it's you. always great to see you. Great to see you guys. All thanks, right. Coach. Thanks for your time. Coach Philip Fulmer joining us here in the booth as Tennessee enjoying the 2019 spring football game. The white team, which features the number one offense against the orange team and the number one defense. Right now, the offense winning 21 to 3. As far as the ones versus ones go, gain of two. That's obviously the highlight of these spring games is, is seeing those ones on ones. But like Coach Fulmer talked about, this is maybe of equal importance is developing this depth, right? And these are a lot of guys in the field right now who you're going to see on Saturdays, right? Because injuries happen. You know, you need 
You need guys in different positions to be able to come in and play and build a program. Jackson Lowe, the early enrollee tight end, <laughs> who's had some big plays in spring practice, caught it and then dropped it for a fumble. And so the white team will head back out on the field. Oh, man, a great route here by Jackson Lowe. A nice throw there by Maurer, hitting him on a little out route. Got to secure that football, though. A great job by Davis punching that football out. And I'm sure Jackson Lowe is wishing that ball had rolled out of bounds. It just tight ropes down the sideline. You see right there the violent punch right there. Charles Tillman kind of made that famous from the Bears, getting that violent arm in there to punch the football out. Hey. Pavaris Crouch, number 27. Again, he is a true freshman, early enrollee. He should be in high school right now, wrapping up his senior season. He is some kind of physical specimen running down that field. He is. There's a, a linebacker running all the way down the field, get an opportunity to recover that fumble. A fantastic play there by the defense. And that's that's Jeremy Pruitt football right there, right? I mean, you give up a big play. He's drilled in those defenders. That's an opportunity when the ball's in space to get that ball out and to create a turnover. That one is dropped. Jennings was the intended target. Defensively, this is a team that improved 33 spots nationally from 2017 to 2018 in total defense and a staggering 74 spots in rush defense. They almost shaved off 100 yards from 2017. That's the kind of impact he had on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and that's not entirely surprising. And I think you're going to see even more jumps this year on that side of the football. They have. A lot of experience coming back on, especially in the back seven of this defense. There's a lot of really good players back there uh, who played a lot of quality football. We haven't really talked a whole lot about Daryl Taylor, either the fifth year senior. Yeah, led the SEC in sacks last year. Had a game where he had four sacks against Kentucky. One of the, turn on the tape of that game, one of the best games I've seen by an edge rusher that he was terrorizing the edge all night. He looked, uh, he's a guy who I think they want to see be more consistent, right? He had some huge bright spots, a four sack game. I think he had another three sack game, right. didn't he, against Georgia? Uh, they want to see him create that consistency. He had all eight of his sacks in SEC play. That one is knocked to the turf by Aubrey Solomon. Now there's another interesting story right there at Aubrey Solomon who transferred into Tennessee from Michigan after a couple of years in Ann Arbor. And they're still not sure what his status will be in terms of playing in the fall. But boy, if they could get him on the defensive front, that would be a game changer as well. Jared Garantano, a couple of touchdown passes, three of them to be exact, into the third quarter. Beginning of the fourth quarter here at the Tennessee Spring Game from Neyland Stadium, Dave Neal, Barrett Jones, and joining us on the field with a microphone is the head coach, Jeremy Pruitt. And coach, thanks for taking a few moments. What, what have your eyes been looking at so far in this spring game? Well, just seeing how the guys compete. Uh, you know, early on, I thought the offensive line struggled a little bit in protection. I think as the games went, they've done a little better job. Um, We've created a few more explosive plays with the offense. And the, and the white team on defense has got some turnovers, so that's helped them. Coach, I know one of your major points of emphasis is just being tough. How would you rate the toughness of this spring, this whole spring versus kind of this team last year? Well, uh, I think our guys are competing better today, so, and they should. They're a year older. Uh, we got more guys, uh, more competition. It's been that way all spring. Have you changed the, because I know last year was just kind of so up in the air. You didn't have, you know, 30-something guys that were going to play for you in the fall. Have you changed spring practice the way you've handled that this year because you've got more players? Well, we, did, we have the same number of guys. I mean, we just got more guys that uh, is going to contribute this fall that are here this spring. So a um, lot more competition uh, within positions and offense and defense, too. I know Jarrett was a little bit rough early on in the game. Do you like the way he settled down and seemingly got to rhythm? I blew him down right there. <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, talk to us about Jarrett and how he has kind of progressed here in this game alone. Well, uh, I felt early on he held the ball too long, you know. Uh, so we got to play a little faster at wide receiver. We got to give a little better protection. He's got to operate a little faster. I, uh, he threw some balls outside the field of play. It's 100%. You're not going to catch those. Uh, and he's done a good job of not doing that last year. So he, he, as the games win, he's played better. 
Well, as far as your backup quarterbacks go, Brian Maurer came in right away and made some plays for you. Had to be excited to see that. Well, I think both of uh, JT and Brian, they both have plenty of ability. Uh, they just need to play ball. So uh, the more live reps you can get, this is actually the first scrimmage that they haven't been live. So they just got to play a little faster and take care of the football. All right, Coach, listen, we'll let you get back to business. Thanks for the time, and uh, good luck rest of the way until we kick it off in the fall. No problem. Thanks, guys. Jeremy Pruitt <laughs> in year two. And, you know, talking to him yesterday, he, he knows that there's still some work to do, but you can tell that he feels like, especially like the recruiting class, the sure. way they finished strong and got some guys that people didn't think were going to come here, and he got them here. Well, there's no doubt. I, I think, you know, a lot of fan bases want to act like recruiting doesn't matter maybe or you can still win with two stars talent. And, sure, there are certain cases where you can point out a guy you know, who was a two-star, three-star, who went on to be really successful. But in general, you know, they, they get it pretty right. I mean, they're, they're, there's a lot of guys who are recruited highly who are first-round draft picks, right? And so uh, when you have the number 12 class in the country, that's certainly getting things headed in the right direction. In fact, the second signing day, I think Tennessee was was by far the star there, getting two of the highest guys left on the board. So it was uh, – there's certainly a lot of positive signs, guys – you know, wanting to play for Coach Pruitt, wanting to play for the staff. Don't underestimate how important that is to create a culture where guys want to come and play and win. Ten of those recruits, early enrollees, that pass caught by Tyler Bird. But you see where they were in 2018, got on the job late, still managed a top 25 class a year ago, but bumped it up to 11th this year. Ten of the ESPN 300 players which is a testament to grinding it out on the recruiting trails. And two, there were five five-star offensive linemen. Two of those guys, are, one of them's already here and another one's coming. Which certainly is obviously a, a huge position of need, right? As far as opportunity goes, there may not have been a program in the country with more opportunity than Tennessee to be a five-star offensive lineman to come in here and play early. So uh, I, think, I, I, I think they're gonna have two uh, of those five-star guys that are bookend tackles as, as true freshmen next year. That's my prediction after kind of seeing what they have and talking to the staff. So would not surprise me at all. One of them's not even here yet. Obviously, we talked about Wanye Morris, who's at left tackle and, and probably will start at left tackle. You see there at the top of the board, Darnell Wright. He's a guy who will come in this summer. But, you know, he is a, he's a stud on film and looks like a guy who might slide into that right tackle position. So they'll have a lot of youth and there'll be some growing pains. But, again, help us on the way of that position position specifically can't overlook Eric Gray who is also an early yep. enrollee a true freshman running back out of Memphis Tennessee was a three-time Tennessee Mr. Football two-time Tennessee Gatorade player of the year he's a little banged up had some shoulder surgery so he is not playing in this spring game but he set the Tennessee high school record with a 138 touchdowns <laughs> yeah I saw this guy play in Memphis that's where I'm from and this guy was the talk of the town for many years, scoring a bunch of touchdowns. So there's there's certainly some talent in the barn. And, you know, I think uh, Coach Fulmer said something very interesting when he was up here about creating competition and how important that is. And, you know, you have to have depth and practice to be able to create competition, right? You have to have, you know, two deep guys to be on that scout team to give your, your uh, other side of the ball a good look, right, and practice and make each other better. And that's the kind of culture they're creating here. They're starting to get some of that depth in. And, and once you see those twos and threes starting to look like real football players, that's when you really start to improve as a football team because those twos and threes start pushing those ones and try, start trying to take their position, and uh, that makes everybody better. Flag down to play. Jackson Lowe, by the way, another one of those early enrollees, the freshman from Cartersville, Georgia, Cartersville Fall High School. Start on the offense, number 82, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Just as I say, he makes back-to-back -back catches. He then <laughs> is whistled for being at offsides. But uh, obviously, you can see Jim Chaney using the tight end. We've seen no doubt. Dominic Wood Anderson with a couple of catches today. Well, I think that's something we're going to see a lot this season. Jim Chaney, it's a great safety valve. He loves the quick passing game. And Dominic Wood Anderson is a big body uh, who can get off the line of scrimmage, create some separation with his quickness. And it could be an easy big target for Jaron Garantano, Jared Garantano to get into a rhythm early and to play well in these football games. Well, for Tennessee, obviously they had a murderer's row last year. They did. Uh, in the middle of the season. But this year they start off with some opportunities, a bunch of home games early. Seven out of nine to start the season. Pretty amazing. The, the schedule certainly sets up more favorably than it did last season to make a bowl game. 
Cup, starting with Georgia State, a bowl team, BYU, a bowl team. Uh, then it's uh, Chattanooga, and then the grind begins at Florida, Georgia, Mississippi State, and Alabama. That'll be that'll determine a lot of how this season will play out. Well, there's no doubt. You know, I think a lot of Tennessee fans still kind of measure a Tennessee season by how you perform against Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. Those are always the three biggest games on the schedule around here. Can they find a way to win at least one of those games this season? That will be a, a big step forward, and it will really help their chances get into a bowl. They took on Florida, at Georgia, at Auburn, then in Alabama, and then at South Carolina last Woo. year in the middle of the season. Now, they did pick up the win against Auburn 30-24, to which was an outstanding performance by yep. Tennessee, and had a chance to knock off South Carolina, lost a lead in that one. Uh, but then they answer back a couple weeks later with a huge win against Kentucky, just yeah. totally dominated the Kentucky Wildcats. was a top 10 team yeah. at the time. That was a huge win for the staff and program. Obviously, after that, followed that up with a kind of a disappointing end uh, with losing to Missouri and Vanderbilt. Can they find a way to sustain it? Again, I think that's as much as anything depth, right? Creating depth late in the season. You got guys banged up. You got guys injured. Do you have that depth where you can win in game 12 and 13? Pass is caught. That's Dominic Wood Anderson, DWA, with the catch for a couple of yards. Yeah, that was a tough go. And, you know, talking to a couple of the guys yesterday about the way that season finished, you know, they were sitting there at five and five. They got to win one of their last two against Missouri yep. or against Vanderbilt. And they just laid an egg in both of those games. And so they had to sit at home during bowl season. And to these guys, man, they were all talking about, you know, how embarrassing that was, how disappointing that was, and how it's kind of just fueled them. Uh, since then. Well, Dave, when you asked Jared Garantano about how last season ended, you remember he was brutally honest. He said, it disgusted me. And he said he needed that fire lit under him and it motivated him all off season. And one big point of emphasis for him was to become a more vocal leader by becoming even closer with his teammates. He said he did everything from taking his O lineman out to dinner and taking his receivers out for ice cream. I guess that position group loves ice cream, <laughs> saying that he needed to get to know his teammates better to kind of understand what makes them tick so that he could properly coach them and give them feedback. And I've been watching him on the sidelines. He's been sitting with his offensive line and with a lot of his position players, giving them feedback and coaching them through this entire game. So you can see that leadership and that he's stepping up. Yeah, you know, by the way, he put on 20 pounds, and I can see why now with the yep. offensive line meals, and then ice followed up with ice cream that's, with the receivers. That's trouble, right? Yeah. Calories yeah. in, calories <laughs> out. <laughs> that's, right. that's a lot of that's a lot of beef. I guarantee you the O linemen aren't wanting to go get ice cream. They're wanting to go eat burgers and wings and steaks, and they know how to put on the pounds. Hang out with the O linemen for a little bit, Dave, and you'll you'll understand how to put on some pounds. <laughs> we we put on some pounds at a JC Holway last night, a restaurant here in Knoxville. We we did it big. So that's uh, we're on the Jarrett Garantano program. <laughs> Joe Doyle with the punt down to the 25 yard line. 46 yard punt. We'll whistle that one dead around the 30 yard line. 515, 514 to go here in the spring football game for Jeremy Pruitt in year number two. Back in a moment. So the orange team, which features the second team offense going against the second team defense on the white, back to work as Brian Maurer, the true freshman early enrollee quarterback. There is a flag down on the play back at the SEC logo. Holding on the offense, number 77. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. You always see the uh young freshman quarterback come in here and they're they're always very willing to run you know, because all they've experienced is the black jersey action in practice they might they might be a little more hesitant once the once the live bullets start because I'm telling you you get out there on the edge you know you learn to slide pretty quickly as a freshman quarterback one guy that we have uh, wearing the white jersey today in the secondary number six at the bottom of your screen out in coverage is D'Angelo Gibbs as Maurer goes the other way up top, and that one is picked off. Jalen McCullough with his second interception today. He'll take that inside the 35-yard line. 
But you see Gibbs right there, number six. He is a transfer from Georgia and just came from Georgia after two years. Former five-star recruit, number 10 overall player, number one in the state of Georgia in 2017. And he's another guy that they're waiting to get clearance. And I, I say this again, he is a dynamic playmaker on the back end of a defense. They're already talented, but you add a player like that to the mix, uh, you can't understate the value of that, but they're still waiting to find out if he'll be cleared for the fall. That's probably a big reason why you see him with the twos today, because they don't, they're not sure if they'll have him or not. And obviously you also have Aubrey Solomon, who we talked about earlier in the broadcast. A guy from Michigan, a former, another former five-star. So, uh, you know, Dave, and, and we talked to Coach Prude about this. You're seeing more and more guys get cleared, you know, to be able to play without sitting out a year. So it'll be very interesting to see how those situations evolve in the coming months. But when you can get a player of Gibbs's caliber or an Aubrey Solomon, who's basically both both Georgia boys coming back to the sure. South, right? Yep. I mean, not that D'Angelo was far off from home at the University of Georgia, but uh, you know, Gibbs also is a cousin of Nigel Warrior. Played his high school football with uh, Nigel and um, Bailey Buchanan. I'm sure that helps. I bet uh, Nigel Warrior was probably doing some recruiting, wasn't he? Recruiting his cousin to come over to Tennessee and play for Coach Pruitt. I'm sure there were a few text messages along the way. Garantano trying to put it in the end zone one more time. Already has three touchdown passes today. Austin Pope in the black jersey. No contact for him, so. Once he's touched, he'll be down. They'll spot it back around the 29-yard line. Again, if you're wondering why the white offense is in two-minute mode, even though they're ahead, is because they're doing mandatory two-minute mode under four minutes for each side. So we'll see two minutes from here on out from both sides. Garantano looks right, throws back over the middle, pass is caught by Palmer, and he is down around the five-yard line and dropped there. And boy, he felt awkwardly on the shoulder. He just, oh, you saw that coming. Cool. Always the number one goal of a spring game for the coaching staff is to escape without any injuries. They've been pretty clean so far. You hope Josh Palmer's okay. He's had a nice day today with a touchdown grab earlier and shown some speed there on that reception. Led team led his team with 10 20 plus yard plays last year. This was a team that certainly was looking for big plays. It looks like they're working on his lower body there as the trainers were. Oh, you saw, yeah. Kind of an awkward yeah. step he took there. Almost immediately dropped the football. You hope he's okay. Maybe just kind of jarred him a little bit. Alante Taylor was the defensive back, tugging on him as he was heading toward the goal line. Callaway over there to talk to his teammate Palmer out of Brompton, Ontario, Canada. But uh, felt like he had enough talent, believed in himself. Found a high school down in South Florida, St. Thomas Aquinas. I was looking for some receivers, moved down there, played a year so he could get recognized and recruited. And boom, here he is at Tennessee. Worked out pretty well for him. A good strategy. Let's see if Garantano can punch in one more touchdown here in this football game. The blitz comes. Garantano gets it away. Incomplete. Looking for Tim Jordan. Garantano now, his numbers, 18 of 34, 189, three touchdowns. I'll tell you what, it was weird last night watching Jalen Hurts in an Oklahoma helmet. What it was. If, it's, it's only a slightly different color. But it's know. still, the OU on the side of the helmet it just wasn't the same. It is not the same. You're right. It was, it was definitely different, and obviously a lot of people wishing him the best after him transferring, now getting an opportunity to play in his fifth year. Yeah, hard to fault him. Sure. That's for sure. Garantano, it's his show in 2019. Can't connect there. Is that one's incomplete? Looking for Brandon Johnson. You know, it's also, you know, Jared Garantano has been in some quarterback battles his last two years. He sure. had to beat out Keller Christ, who transferred yep. in from Wisconsin, won the battle, got the starting job. I wonder what it does for him knowing that this is his t his team, his job, and he's get to, he gets to put the foot on the gas. Uh, I'll tell you the most practical thing it does, it enables you to be a leader all offseason, right? I mean, it's hard to be a leader in the offseason when you're competing for the job, right? Because, I mean, it, you kind of have to be cemented in that role to really be able to call guys out and to be comfortable in your shoes of understanding that you got to be the guy that makes it go for this football team. 
Tim Jordan at 19 catches Ooh. last year. Couldn't hang on to, to that one. Excuse me, 12 catches last year. Yeah, Tim Jordan, uh, he's going to want this one back right here. A nice job by Garantano. Touchdowns and checkdowns in the red area. Finds a nice check down, Ooh. and he would have walked into the end zone. He could have. Molly McGrath could have backpedaled in the end zone right there. Tim Jordan didn't have anybody within 20 yards of him. He's going to want that one back. Hey, with her great posture. With her that. great. She has fantastic posture. <laughs> Thanks for your faith in me, guys. But I don't think I can go up against SEC football players. No. But. We're going to find out next week at the Georgia Spring Game when you're refereeing. We're going to see your backpedaling. That's true. Hopefully I don't get trucked over. We can save some film. And there's exactly what Jared Garitano was excited about when Jim Chaney came over here to be the offensive coordinator was throwing to wide open receivers because nobody was within 10 yards of Jawan Jennings right in the middle of the, the football field. I'm not sure, probably some kind of defensive breakdown there, but a nice job of Garantano finding his man. Looks like they're bringing an all out blitz. Anytime you bring an all out blitz, that means you're in man coverage. Somebody was obviously confused because nobody was covering Jawan Jennings. Great recognition by Garantano for the touchdown. Well, we had a chance to talk to Jawan Jennings yesterday, and boy, you can tell he is excited about this final campaign. Yes. He's got a lot of energy. They say he's kind of the alpha dog in that locker room right now. No doubt. And, you know, he talked about how last year he was really in the tank this time, right? Because he was coming off of a knee injury. He wasn't, he was uncertain about his future. I think he was actually kicked off the team for a little he was bit. Kicked off the team. You know, I think he thought it might all be over, right? And he's really turned it around and has become a major positive influence. Really a great story on this team. A guy who goes, you know, from kind of being in the doghouse to really becoming one of those vocal leaders and a guy who is easily excitable and gets others excited around him. So a great story. A lot of people rooting for Jawani, Jawan to have a great season this year. We were talking to a couple other players in our meetings yesterday, and he came barreling through the door. <laughs> Man, it was stuck about bringing some life to the table. He brought some life, <laughs> yeah. there's no doubt. He's and Jared Garantano's going to find him quite a bit this year. I've got a feeling as this season unfolds. Garantano has stepped it up after a sluggish start to this one where he was three of eight. At one point he was five of 11 and he is now 19 of 37 for 198. Yeah, Garantano, you said started off sluggish but settled in. Finds DWA on the touchdown there. A great ball to Marquez Callaway down the seam. And then a nice play by Josh Palmer right there to pin the ball. It's his hip. This was one of my favorite throws of the day, a timing pattern. You can tell he has a lot of familiarity. And then being able to recognize the blitz, stand in there, maybe take a hit. That's something we know he does well. He's a tough kid. Survey the field and find a wide open Jawan Jennings for the touchdown. 19 of 37. I'm sure he'll want to see those accuracy numbers up. But again, a lot of that was in that first quarter where he was a little bit sloppy. Did a nice job really from the second quarter on of settling down, making some plays. That pass is caught around the 50-yard line. Nice grab. Jacquez Jones coming up high, picks up 15 yards. We talked about he has got some kind of arm. On the run, slings a tight spiral out to the wide side of the field. That one caught by Jones again. will pick up eight yards. Got some flags down on the field. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 men in the formation. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. That's something that gets worked out here. That's why you see the, the coaching staffs mandating two minute under four because two minute obviously is such an important part of football. You know, saw a stat that 10% of all plays run are two-minute plays. It's pretty amazing because there's so many plays run at the end of the game. Oftentimes, those are the plays that determine who wins and loses the football game. So you want to offensively and defensively figure out the substitution patterns, how you want to how you want to work and communicate, how you communicate to the wide receivers among the secondary. It's an extremely important part of football where really can win or lose you probably one or two games a year by how you execute two-minute. They're going to say Shrout is sacked back at the 45-yard line. And Shrout's lucky they called that a sack because he just threw up a gift right there. That might have been going for six. Jay 
Jeremy Pruitt still coaching him up on a fourth down situation. Shroud. That pass is caught around the 35. Nice grab from Jordan Murphy, and he'll get it inside the 25 down to the 24-yard line. That's a 31-yard pickup. Yeah, beautiful throw right here by Shroud. Just stands in there and throws a strike right down the seam. Finds a little hole in the zone. A nice play there by Shroud. When he has time, he's got a sharp arm. Shroud will take it in. He'll be two-hand touched around the 14-yard line. Over the middle, pass is caught to the end zone. I believe he got in James Brown. Go, a nice slant pattern there. Good job by James Brown, beating his man to the inside. Shroud again uses that strong arm, sits in there. Nice rhythm timing pattern, hits him for the touchdown. So a good sign there. Want to get that second offense going. Again, puts that ball right between the eight and the four. Right on the money for a touchdown for the Orange team. Well, they converted a fourth down and stick it in the end zone on the touchdown pass from J.T. Shroud to James Brown. Well, this is a team last year that, uh, I don't, you know, expectations weren't high. So anytime you can knock off a couple of ranked teams along the way, I, I got to think that's a victory, especially one of them on the road at Auburn and they knocked off Kentucky here just dominated the Wildcats so there's some positive to build on there I think the disappointing aspect was not getting to a bowl game but you snapped a losing a lengthy losing streak in conference play school record losing streak in conference play and now you kind of have captured some attention the ESPN football power index has them as a top 15 team you do and you got a lot of guys coming back to this team you saw the numbers there 10 on offense and seven on defense. A bunch of guys returning. And again, only 10 seniors on this team this year, right? So still a pretty young football team. But guys who guys who played a lot of football, particularly on defense, right? I mean, you got two sophomores, uh, particularly look at the cornerback position, Alante Taylor and Bryce Thompson, who both started as true freshmen and played a ton of football, who carry a lot of experience in this season. So I think there's certainly, uh, there are bright spots and there are things to be excited about if you're a Tennessee Volunteer fan. I think the questions they have to answer, how are they going to fill up the defensive line, losing all those players from a year ago that were such big contributors? The sure. Alexis Johnson, Shai Tuttle, Kyle Phillips, Paul Bain. And the other question is, who's going to be there for the offensive line? Right. That's a huge question for me is, how does this offensive line improve? How do these freshmen handle the load? As we see here, part of the, part of the magic of spring game is now we have Joe Bauer, who has swapped squads, and he is now quarterbacking for the white team, so don't be confused. Garantano's day is done. We see here the potential offensive line that we think maybe the way it might shape up. Only two of those guys out there today and Karan Calvert, the right guard, who Jim Chaney really likes, uh, and Wanye Morris, uh, the young freshman left tackle. But there you see Trey Smith. He's obviously a big question mark, as I'm sure Everyone's kind of wondering for more clarity on, on, on his status, and I'm sure he's wondering for more clarity on his status. Uh, you talk to the coaching staff and the players, though, about Trey Smith, we should say. Just a fantastic kid, right? A guy who's come out this offseason, worked very hard, very positive about his situation, a guy who wants to be out there, and his teammates are 100% behind him. So you hope he can get healthy because, man, when this guy plays, he is an absolute game wrecker. Uh, the way he gets out there and puts his paws on people. I love watching him play football, and really he fits in perfectly with Jim Chaney's style of football. Look, Jim Chaney's identity, if you followed him, what he really wants to do, he's very versatile and can do a lot of things. He wants to have a power running game, right? He wants to run downhill, run those inside zone type plays where he can pound and lean on teams. He believes that you have to be uh, to able to run the football to be successful in this league, and that's the kind of guys he wants to develop up front. For the time being, though, until they can get that offensive line situated, it might be sideline to sideline and right. hope somebody can break a tackle, right? That's right. He said, you know, we're going to have to figure out a way to manufacture a running game, get some tall sweeps going, get out on the edges. It's going to be tough. They're going to blow it dead. It's pressure again. 
Coach Fulmer was up here with us earlier in the third quarter and, and he brought it to our attention. I mean, Jeremy Pruitt and this defense, they're blitzing and everything in the spring game. They're not holding anything back. <laughs> yeah, Coach Pruitt, he's a defensive coach. Don't forget that, right? So he does not want to let anybody score. He wants to keep that score low. And he might uh, be saying he's watching both sides, but I can promise he's watching that defense a little more intently. And that will be the final play of the spring game. So good look at Jared Garantano with his four touchdown passes, no interceptions after a slow start, got it cranked up. Looks like he'll be ready for the 2019 season. So some questions to be answered, but certainly not as many as a year ago for Jeremy Pruitt. That'll do it from Knoxville. For Barrett Jones, Molly McGrath, the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long. Coming up next, it's SEC Now.